This was just posted by Palmer. I hadn't seen this yet, so we're gonna experience it together. And maybe this is a nothing burger, but it seems interesting enough to pull up. Apologies. It has been proven that Pal World is or was not made with AI and was not made with stolen assets. In fact, the look how the models are one to one Twitter user later admitted to scaling them to fit. Y'all couldn't find a legitimate reason for anger and fabricated it. So just before we go into specifics, basically what's been going on with Pal World is there's a group. It seems like there are a lot of Pokemon fans that are trying desperately to find a reason to dismiss this game and hate it. And it's really honestly pathetic um because they are really stretching like uh, there there's kind of a crossover where it's the pokemon fans that are offended that there's now a game that's winning over pokemon fans because let's be real it is clearly heavily heavily inspired by pokemon but it's still a very different game than pokemon and then there's another group which are the like anti-ai activists who i think have good reason to be worried about ai but it's turning into the same kind of boogeyman of like, oh no, it's too scary. You have to ban it. You have to dismiss it that we've seen before. And I, I think it's because AI has the potential to put a lot of people out of work. There's no doubt about that. And one of the scariest things, and interestingly enough with AI, everybody assumed the one group that would be safe from AI making their jobs obsolete were artists. Cause it was like, well, a robot can, yeah, it can like do accounting way better than a human. Cause it can't make those same mistakes that a human might make when they're tired or something. It's really good at math. It's really good at analyzing scientific data, stuff like that. So those people, they could have their jobs replaced by AI, but artists will be safe. And then we've seen AI art come along and it's just, it's very, very good. It's very good. Now, granted, it has a lot of problems. The thing I've pointed to before is like fingers and hands always get kind of busted. But some models like Mid Journey 5 or Mid Journey 6.0, very, very good. And they're able to produce pictures and images that even include like copyrighted characters, which I think they they uh, turned that off. They were able to, to find a way to <laughs> make that not work. But it's at least capable and has been capable in the past of generating uh, copyrighted characters in all new scenes and situations that look like they could be real. Like people used it to create pictures of Mario, like standing at a grave sobbing, <laughs> like something that clearly has never come from Nintendo, but looks very, very good. And they can do it in like 10 seconds with something like mid journey. So it now appears that even artists are not safe from what AI art tools are able to put out. And so there's kind of a couple of ways that you can discuss it. Either you can argue that AI art and AI images should be just banned outright, should never be allowed, or there's the more sophisticated position, which is that they should be allowed, but only if the models are trained on like AI systems that, uh, or that are trained on art sets rather that are from consenting artists. So this was the thing that I think uh, Getty, Getty Images, they just announced this where they are going to have their own kind of AI model that's trained off of their licensed images from their photographers and artists. So in that case, that AI generative thing is totally fair because the artists have consented and been paid to have their artwork used in the training process. So there's kind of two approaches to it. Most of the people that seem to be freaking about Pal World, though, are the former group they are the the group that's saying if it used ai anything it should be canceled and people shouldn't play it now all of this though is kind of beside the point because there's been no evidence that they've used ai in the creation of pal world not to mention it's been in the works for years well before these ai tools were uh, ubiquitous and so they've taken to to grasping at straws all the way to the point of claiming that like, well, look, the CEO previously said in an interview that he's interested in how AI could be used in video game development. Okay. Okay. If that's your evidence, then okay, get out. <laughs> like that's not convincing um, at all. Like everybody said they're interested in how it could go out. And I think there's tons of potential for AI tools in video game development. The fact that there are AI tools in their infancy right now where you can sketch out a character whether it's a human sketching it or an AI sketching it, you can have a drawing, a 2D image of a character, and then an AI can model it for you. And it still needs tweaks and stuff, but these tools are currently in basically alpha 
compared to to where they'll be in five years so absolutely these things are going to make video game uh, development extremely efficient and um it will probably speed up the process a lot like these six seven year development cycles could be cut in half with some of these tools. So absolutely managers and executives are looking at them. But what they say specifically is that a lot of these claims were uh, faked because we saw this, this went kind of semi-viral uh, because people were taking models of some of the different creatures and were trying to line them up and show, look, they just took the original model leaked from whatever game and then they reworked the model into the shape it takes in Pal World. So they just straight up copy and, and pasted it. Apparently that's not true. <laughs> Don't fall for the lies that hashtag power stole assets. This takedown of screenshots um, from those videos proves the power models are different. The person that created the misleading anti power world video admits to hating power world for glorifying animal abuse. This has nothing to do with plagiarism. They just hate the game for being too edgy. And they said, I'm doing this because I think it's disgusting how much power world glorifies animal abuse. that's a new one okay I, it's it's a video game i wonder what they thought of like red dead 2. Like red dead 2 yes it's a great game but cancel it they, you can hunt animals and you you ride horses horses aren't meant to be ridden i get the vibe with a lot of these pal world haters that there are uh, there are conflicting motivations like some of them i think are just honestly maybe they they think that this has the potential to overstep the bounds of fair use in video game development and it's a little too close to pokemon and that makes them uncomfortable okay in that case don't buy it don't play it don't support it that's fine that's fine i can respect your choice to do that when you're calling for everybody to boycott it i need a little bit more and when you resort to distributing false information and misleading information because let's be honest, people just look at these two meshes and they're like, see, you overlapped them. They're the same. Well, guess what would happen if I overlapped the meshes for like Joel and like, what's a, what's another character that they might say is comparable. I don't know. Joel and Deacon from Days Gone. You take the mes meshes, T-pose them, overlap the mes meshes in wireframe view. They probably look really similar because they're bipedal apes. <laughs> and that's about it. But you it, with this same logic you get to overlap you know again quadriplegic quadriplegic i think that's specifically quadrupeds yeah quadriplegic i think is something else quadrupeds and overlap them in wireframe view and be like oh see they're totally totally the same it's like no 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 they're not they're not they have four legs and a head and a tail sort of but they're not the same but this is just the thing like on Twitter, something like this will go out and pop up on somebody's timeline. And if they've decided that they want to be anti pal world for whatever reason, they just love it, retweet it and are like, see, it, it's good now. It's good. We can continue pushing it. There we go. Even if it's not true because they don't really care about what's true. It's what it allows them to justify their hatred of the thing they've already decided that they hate. So the whole discourse around pal world has just been so toxic. It's been painful. And I myself have like had videos in the works. We were filming a video on Monday night and I just ended up walking away from it and being like, okay, I'll come back. Maybe I'll do this later in the week just because there was so much crap going on with this stuff. I just didn't even want to bother with it. So all of this to say, I am glad that some of this is blowing over a little bit because it is just so painful. And at the end of the day, like the thing I've said before, and some people have mistaken this as me being like broadly dismissive. Here's the deal. Like if you are like an AI, anti-AI activist, let's say if you're an anti-AI activist, that's okay. I can understand your concerns and your your passionate response to this. You're trying to protect artists jobs and all that. I totally understand that and I can respect it as long as you're respectful to others. But what we're seeing right now is clearly a failed approach. OK, the argument is being lost because millions and millions of people are still buying Pal World. <laughs> They're not being convinced by your arguments. OK, so let's just think pragmatically. We got to do something else, something else. Like, look at this. Pal World has sold 7 million copies in five days on Steam alone. I have confirmed with Pocket Pair this is a Steam only number, not including Xbox sales or Game Pass. All of the arguments that, oh, well, this 
we need to all stand up and fight it it's it's just like the hogwarts legacy calls for boycotts all over again and it seems like the harder people are pushing for it to be banned the less convinced people are i would encourage people to try and think uh outside the box to try and come up with a different way of arguing your point because whatever is happening right now is not working <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing with like I mentioned this in the other video it's the same thing with the Hogwarts Legacy stuff where people were like uh uh well we think you should boycott Hogwarts Legacy so you know what they did they came into our live stream chats and started typing out the n-word with a hard r in our chats to try and get the stream taken down all my stuff demonetized and everything which on the one hand is not how that works that's not how you get a youtuber or streamer in trouble but it also made a lot of people go wait if you're desperate enough to do that like, if you're right, I don't want to be right. I don't want to be on your team. I think you're the bad guy. And Pal World hasn't reached that far with the mass groups, but I have seen people calling for boycotts of YouTubers and streamers who played the game. I've seen that. Granted, it's much smaller because Hogwarts Legacy was way bigger than, than Pal World even is. But if that continues, it's only going to make the fight against generative AI more of a lost cause because you're just going to get people tuning you out and if you don't want that really try to look at this from an outside perspective because what's going on right now is not it's not working man it's not working ign did an early access review should we see what they said about it a quick note this oh, review sorry. is only for the pc version of pal world that's available through steam later this week we'll have a separate review of the version available on xbox and through the microsoft store on pc what resolution are you playing at my dude this is mad blurry whoa which is the version you get access to buzz your girlfriend woof uh is this an ai game there is literally zero evidence of that other than this the CEO previously saying he's interested in how AI could be used with game development. Anybody saying that it's an AI game is either they have information that's not public uh, and that would cause the game to be delisted from Steam and it's like very, very serious information, or they're just lying and making stuff up. But there is there is no information or evidence to say that it's an AI game, whatever that would mean. Let's see. I'm curious. Is it actually good or is it just, boy, I wish this was good feels making people play it? Because when I look at clips, I can't see the charm. Looks kind of flat. It, I mean, there's big empty spaces and stuff. The core gameplay loops, though, if you like survival games, base building, things like that, crafting, it's a really good time. It really is. Like, And it's a great turn your brain off game. Because it doesn't really take a lot of mental power to, to go through the motions of collecting stuff and crafting and upgrading and um, capturing these guys and doing boss fights and crawling dungeons and stuff. It doesn't take much brain power. So it's it's a the kind of game you play with Breaking Bad on the other screen or Family Guy playing like or a movie or a Luke Stevens live video. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those games. And in that capacity, it's great. And I, I really do enjoy it. It's not going to be the kind of game that you're playing, you know, if you only like Naughty Dog or Santa Monica Studio titles, but it's a great junk food game is what I would say. Um, not for everybody, just because everybody's playing it or millions of people are playing it does not mean that you will necessarily love it. But for what it is, I think it's pretty fun. And yeah, pretty right. No PS5. PS5, uh, apparently PlayStation does not allow early access games. Xbox does and Steam does. So PS5, uh, because of PlayStation's rules, does not get the game. So it's a, a de facto Xbox console exclusive and it's on Game Pass. So you don't even have to pay for it if you have Game Pass, which is great. With Game Pass, as that one is currently on an older build with significantly more issues that make it a genuinely different experience. But for now, on with the Steam review. Nothing about what Pal World does seems like it should work. A thinly veiled Pokemon clone where you do this to its adorable monsters? A base building it. survival game where you use... Yeah, to, to be clear, the St Game Pass version isn't the same as Steam version. This is a an age-old problem with Game Pass. On Steam, you can basically just upload a patch to your game and then it goes out and you're good. On Xbox and PS5 as well, there are waves of approval that your game has to go through before it's allowed to be published on the Xbox store because they want to make sure that your game update and patch is not going to like brick the console so there's all sorts of extra layers of approval that you have to go through and 
that delays the process. So they've issued like hot fixes and patches and stuff to Pal World on Steam. And those are still in the approval process for Xbox. So whatever version you're playing on Xbox is technically going to be delayed by maybe like a week. I don't know exactly how long, but it's going to be delayed compared to the Steam version where it's going to be updated very, very quickly. But that's one of the perks of console ownership and playing on console is that the version you get is verified to be safe. But it also means that it's going to be behind the Steam version. So there's pros and cons to both. It just depends on what you care about your kidnapped creatures as laborers and may even resort to eating them when times get tough an open world co-op adventure where you and your friends do this Oops. to harvest leather defying the odds this wholly irreverent gun-toting take on the creature collection genre has been unrelentingly fun across the 100 plus hours i've spent shooting cartoon kittens in the face jesus so he's been a hundred hours, a hundred hours. Wow. We, okay. So this guy actually has, has a lot of experience. I was braced for this to be like a 10 hour review and not that helpful, but yeah, that's, that's great. As an early access game, it's got plenty of bugs and performance issues and sure it shamelessly cribs the design for many of its collectible creatures, but its survival mechanics are intuitive and deep. Its action packed combat is silly and satisfying and exploring its world in search of new pals to kick the snot out of hasn't come close to getting old. Pioneer of the frozen sea. Pen King. Despite the clear eyebrow raising inspiration it takes from a certain creature collecting powerhouse, Pal World more closely resembles a formulaic survival game like Grounded, with a roster of lovable monsters to capture as a clever twist on that formula. You find Works yourself really well. inexplicably dropped into the wilderness of a strange land filled with oversized, dangerous beasts called pals. From there... Uh, Cameron, I think that that's... It's, if you think that the game doesn't have like a purpose or a clear goal, I just think that this type of game is not for you. Because to be clear, like it's a survival game. That's all it is. So like you're just trying to survive, build up a base, get better equipment, fight more bosses. Like that's all you're doing. And that's true of most survival games is there's usually not like a clear story or, or objective. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's, it's different. Uh, it, it's open-ended. It's a sandbox where you kind of make your own fun, right? So not everybody's going to like that and that's totally fine, but it's important to note that just because like that doesn't maybe line up with what your preference is for a game that has more clear goals, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. As for objective reviews, I mean, objective just means you're looking at it objectively. Like you're trying to look at it without your biases at play. And the thing is, and this is true of all game reviews, and I cannot stress this enough, every review of any game ever, whether it's from me, IGN, GameSpot, Skill Up, whoever, everybody has biases everybody and guess what at places like ign and skill up and me like if we like a certain type of game the odds of us rating that game higher go up if i really like third person adventure narrative games and i get presented with a really high production value uh, very well written one the odds of me rating that highly are much higher than it would be for somebody let's say that only plays survival games and doesn't really like the narrative stuff so for these types of games, they are assigning the reviewer who likes these kinds of games and is experienced with these types of games to review it. So already it has kind of a built-in, I don't even know, like uh, maybe handicap. Like it's, it's assisted in its review because the people playing it are more inclined to like that kind of game. In the same way that they're going to assign like veterans of From Software games that play these difficult games to the review of like the Elden Ring uh, DLC that's going to come out this year, probably. And so you could say like, oh, that got a 10. The DLC got a 10. Yes, it's a 10 for people like the reviewer, for people that like this kind of game. If you only play Mario Kart, you're probably not going to think that Elden Ring is a 10 out of 10 because it's not reviewed for you, if that makes sense. So in the same way, like with Pal World, the people that are reviewing it are people that generally like games like Pal World, that like survival crafting heavy games. And so they're playing it and they're really, really enjoying it. That doesn't mean that it's not objective. It just means that it, it's somebody reviewing it for the audience that the game is probably targeting. And you can try to be as objective as possible. I don't think it's possible to have a truly objective review. It just 
it doesn't work. Humans aren't like that. That's why I think it's important to disclose your biases at the outset and just be like, hey, I really like these games. I really like Pokemon. I really like this. I haven't played these other games. I really hated Ark. I like disclose your biases, positive and negative. That way the audience knows where you're coming from. Just don't like pretend that it's not a thing like that. That's what drives me crazy is when people think that they're being truly, truly objective. And I try to be very clear, like, no, I have biases. For Assassin's Creed Origins, I freaking love Ancient Egypt. Let me be very clear. I love Ancient Egypt. If a game comes out and is set in Ancient Egypt, that for me is like a plus one to the total score because the idea of exploring Ancient Egypt to me is awesome. It's fantastic, you know? <laughs> and so I love it. Um, but I'll be clear about that and try to be upfront with it so you know where I'm coming from, right? Yeah, Christian, look, this basic stuff, in my opinion, I don't think people are coming out this game in good faith, honestly, because so many other games have released that people are similar. Uh, I think it's the success that bothers people. Maybe, maybe. I think it's, there is a subset of group uh, or subset of people, um, especially on Twitter, that are coming at it definitely in bad faith, like as we saw earlier in the stream, just straight up making stuff up about the game and being like, see, it's an AI game and there's zero evidence. Oh, look, they copied this model from this other game when they didn't and they just straight up lied about it. Uh, so there's absolutely been some really bad faith arguments against it. And I don't know if it's just like Pokemon fanboys that are upset a game that is heavily inspired by Pokemon without a doubt is doing so well and is showing how terrible Pokemon has been managed for the last decade. I don't know if it's that or if it's that these people just like to be contrarians. I don't know. But it does seem really, really weird how people just are committed. There's a group of people out there that are committed to disliking whatever game is most popular. It's just stupid to me. We saw it with Hogwarts. We're like a lot of the people that were really against Hogwarts Legacy as well weren't even gamers. Like they weren't gamers. They just were looking for the latest thing to hate. And it's just it's toxic and pathetic you'll need to build a base, hilariously force the local fauna into oh your God, servitude, and upgrade your gear. Penguin. You won't find yourself hanging out in idyllic towns or challenging gym leaders to friendly contests. This isn't that kind of adventure. Instead, your goal is to survive the harsh land and face off against psychotic pal trainers who raise villages, attack your base, and command foreboding towers and dungeons filled with goons who shoot to kill. And yeah, tonally, that's an utterly unhinged combination. One moment, I was taking in pastoral views as I explored for new pals. The next, I was firing guns at armed thugs and considering the possibility of butchering a pal who had been mentally broken by the poor working conditions of my sweatshop in <laughs> order to avoid starvation. Rather than not addressing... <laughs> it's just, just funny. It reminds me of... Um... Have you guys played Cult of the Lamb? That's a freaking awesome game, okay? Oh man, it's so funny. And there's like, there's a whole branch and granted it's about cult, like a cult of cute creatures, but there's like a whole thing where you can choose to go with one kind of, it's almost like a skill tree, but not quite. It's like a cult tree, but you can choose to go with a certain route where like your cult becomes focused on cannibalism. And so like they, <laughs> they get reaffirmed every time the cult eats one of their own. And it, it's like pretty intense and crazy, but it's freaking hilarious. Oh, they just released the sex update too. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, it's, it's just like a whole, it's a whole thing and it's freaking awesome. Uh, if you've not played Cult of the Lamb, you should. It's sort of actually similar to Pal World. It kind of makes Pal World look like it didn't come that far out of left field just because it's like, it's also about cute woodland creatures, but you're managing a cult instead. And so yeah, it's, it's super good. It's a very good time. I highly recommend it. Cult of the Lamb is awesome. ...aspects of the creature collecting genre Pal World amusingly leans into them and lets you do absurd things like pick up your fiery fox yeah, this is fantastic. and use it as a flamethrower to burn your enemies to a crisp. <laughs> or equip your monkey pal with a machine gun. I mean, it sure beats Tail Whip. That's fantastic. Once you get over how incredibly weird that all feels, it's a complete blast. Catching pals out in the open world is a ton of fun, though it's definitely a bit weird to hack a small penguin unconscious with an axe before you can stuff it into a pal sphere. Or even more alarmingly, do this. Oh no, that penguin got ice capped. 
It feels extremely wrong at first, to be sure, but I found myself disturbingly used to the ritual after just king a few- King Paca, I've not seen this guy in the game. He's an alpaca king. That's fantastic, man. Wow. Hours. I mean, is doing the dirty work myself really all that different from battling them with another captured creature instead? <laughs> the devs said that they, in an interview, they added guns because Americans like to shoot things. Bro, they are on, they understand America better than most people. <laughs> Like, wow. And it worked. That's what's really funny. It's like if they did this and then the game was a flop, it would have been like, oh, well, they they tried. They tried. But no, instead, <laughs> instead, they just like straight up like, yeah, Americans like shooting things. Put that in the game. And then it ends up blowing up and being one of the most successful games of the year. It's just freaking hilarious. Don't Steam take a 30% cut of game sales, even if the game uses AI. I don't think they'll remove it. No, they, they will. And they have before. Steam like makes... B -b -b billions of dollars losing out on one game that's generated like 180 million in raw revenue so steam's take would be like 60 million i i don't think they care that much they'd rather just stick to the policy so yeah i don't i don't think that they would have a problem banning it the pals themselves on the other hand aren't quite as original as the process of catching them as i described the majority of them as almost copyright infringement seriously just look at them Oh, someone's going to get sued. Someone's going to get sued. The fact that they haven't been sued yet, I, I think is pretty telling that Nintendo is unsure if they could actually win this. Because like Nintendo, you guys saw the thing that went viral where the guy made a mod that put Ash Ketchum and all of the Pokemon and stuff into the game, swapped out all the models for like the Pokemon counterparts that were close uh, and all of those models out. And he posted that as a mod posted a video of it that went viral. Nintendo within like 24 hours issued a cease and desist. Their lawyers came and made them unlist everything. They copyright claimed all of the videos of it. Like I can't even show you the footage of it in this video of the mod because Nintendo will strike the entire stream. That's how hardcore Nintendo was within a day of that guy doing it. And they still have yet to do anything with Pal World. Does that not tell you maybe they don't think that they actually have a case? I mean, they might still try, but they also might be realizing that it's a tough argument to make. Like it's a really tough argument to make because yes, clearly it's inspired, but guess what? It's not a crime to be inspired by something. It just isn't. And it's honestly um, very, very different. Oh, he charged for it as on his Patreon. Yeah, that's a great way to get Nintendo pissed off at you. If he was charging for it, that is just a dumb move. Uh, I, I don't feel bad for him if he was trying to charge money for it because that's clearly an issue. Um, but it's not a crime to be inspired by it. Yeah, you can make the parody argument, but just in general, like they are different. They are named differently. They look very different. The argument would basically be like, see, they're cute little creatures inspired by real world animals. They stole from us. Then you can go, yeah, and they stole from Dragon Quest and they stole from like, I forgot the name of the art style, but there's like a old, old uh, drawings in an art style that was created in like the 80s that was inspired by or inspired Dragon Quest. So like you could just take it all the way back. And it's like the, all of this stuff is just iterative at the end of the day. And are you really Digimon? That, that sounds right. Um, like, are you really going to basically copyright cute animal designs? Like just broadly? No one else can do it. That's pretty dumb. That said, uninspired and derivative as they are, the designs are still mostly pretty neat and have a lot of personality, which makes each one a ton of fun to hunt and do battle against. I'm especially fond of this completely helpless blob. Aw, oh, the poor guy's trying his best. Though capturing, leveling up, and fighting alongside pals is a major and awesome part of the adventure, you'll likely spend much more time hanging out at the various bases you'll build. Just like most other survival games, you'll need to keep a steady stream of crafting materials flowing in, like wood, stone, and food. And the key to automating that process so you don't spend endless hours mind-numbingly chopping down trees and swatting rocks with a pickaxe is by making clever use it's of with pals themselves. <laughs> For example, farming could soak up lots of your time as you plant seeds, water your plots, and then harvest the crops. But once you've captured some pals and put them to work at your base, you can have them do it all for you. 
This PAL-based cooperation is not only ridiculously adorable to watch, but gives you even more reasons to catch every creature you find. You might not have much use for the fox-like PAL fox sparks in battle, but if you keep one at your base, whenever you fire up the grill to cook or use the furnace to smelt some ingots, your charming fire friend will come running to make the task go by faster. Even the weakest creatures give you a whole new reason to catch not just one of them, but a whole bunch to put to work. As you level up your character and capture pals with different abilities, you'll be able to transform your bases from oh, see, I haven't seen any to of this. industrialized fortresses, complete with conveyor belt. I haven't seen like any of this. I knew that there was like end game stuff to like craft weapons and stuff. I hadn't actually seen footage of like conveyor belts. <laughs> And like robotic arms and stuff. That's pretty good. It's for your pals to go to work assembling weapons and ammo for you to use against enemies. A hilarious transformation that made me question how much better I was than the villainous rival trainers I faced out in the wilds. You're not, that's the point. <laughs> Getting away from the base to explore the absolutely enormous map and look for hidden chests and eggs, battle dangerous boss pals, raid dungeons stuffed with loot, or chat with a handful of NPCs and vendors scattered throughout the wilderness is consistently fun. In one area, I got chased by these guys. In another, I found a creepy black market trader who sold rare, probably illicitly obtained pals. And in another, I watched a squad of suicidal toucan pals rush into a camp of poachers and self-detonate. Ouch. <laughs> Once you unlock the ability to ride pals, especially flying ones, the world really opens up. There's miles and miles to explore, from bamboo forests filled with goofy panda pals to murky swamps overrun with goblin pals. There's even an active volcano to be scaled where all the pals are, predictably, made of fire. Crap One of the things I also really like about Pal world is that it's not a procedurally generated map. Like this would have been the most easy thing for them to do is just, oh, it's procedurally generated because that's what we do now. And instead it's it's all hand, not maybe not hand placed, but it's the same map for everybody. And I think that that's great. It allows them to actually craft it more specifically. I'm honestly kind of tired of procedurally generated stuff because it just, there's only so much you can do with it. So I'm actually really, really liking that they chose to go that that route. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sold 10 million copies in three days. They aren't that worried about this game. They're also freaking like, <laughs> and those games are like totally broken. People I think are, are actually worried and some of the most hardcore like Pokemon fans are I think worried because this is, I, I think it makes Pokemon look real bad. Like they're not the same game. They don't necessarily appeal to the same core fan bases because they're very, very different, but they're clearly inspired. Uh, they were clearly inspired by Pokemon when making this, but I think it, it comes along. It kind of flips the formula around and it works really, really, really well. And uh, it also reaffirms that this early access game is bigger, more elaborate, more polished, and much more fun, in my opinion, than the last pair of Pokemon games that they dropped. And it makes Game Freak look really bad. Exactly. Really, really lazy in comparison. So hopefully Nintendo's looking at this and being like, imagine if we did this kind of game with a Pokemon like Pokedex and like a whole, uh, like official one. That would be great. That would be exactly what people would want. And I I agree. It would sell fantastically well. I have no doubt. Imagine a $70 variant of that polished and really solid. But uh, do they? Uh, do I think they're actually going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. Crafting gear and leveling your pal squad to survive increasingly unwelcoming parts of the world is rewarding, not just because of all the interesting new pals to find and capture, but because certain biomes will give you access to materials you'll need to bring your base and equipment to the next level. Even cooler, there are always at least a few massive spires rising in the distance, serving as a reference for your ultimate goal, to reach them all and challenge the lethal bosses lurking within. Like most survival games, everything Pal World offers immediately becomes more fun when joined by friends in multiplayer. Up to 32 people can be in a single server on the Steam version. Though and I think it's all, it's hosted locally on Steam at least. And uh, it's worked very, very well. Like I played it with two friends. Um, we actually, this is funny. We actually have like a little double date night thing planned for tonight. So like uh, me, Nikki, and then another couple are going to be playing this together in a server, like just as a fun little thing.
to, to play together and it works shockingly well. And thankfully, like all of the base achievements are shared. Like it's, it's fantastic. It works really well. It's just a good time. That number is currently capped to a paltry four on Xbox and through the Microsoft Store. Running wild throughout the open world, taking down powerful bosses together, and managing a collective base all work without hassle. And co-op also alleviates some of the stress of having to grind for resources all the time, if those friends are willing to chip in and not steal all your stuff, that is. It probably goes without saying for an early access game, but be warned that you are bound to encounter technical issues and bugs on occasion. These issues I've seen are fortunately mostly minor so far, but I have been hit with rough frame rates and stuttering, hard crashes, and multiplayer disconnects. Though I had one that was weird where the game was capped at 60 frames, and then I alt tabbed out and alt tabbed back in, and it was back at 120. It was weird. I haven't seen that before. None of that was so commonplace or game breaking. Yeah, double dating in a game. My boys live in life. Gotta love it. I'm very fortunate to have a, a wife who is a gamer as well. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, this is how much of a gamer my wife is uh, and how awesome she is. I, I mentioned Pal World to her. She's like, that sounds interesting. But I was really hoping to start another run of Baldur's Gate 3 and maybe go like, you know, full, full, maybe like warlock or something. This she's like, I've maybe, maybe I was going to go barbarian. I was going to shake it up, maybe do the dark urge run this time and, and try that. I was like, Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> Such a nerd. I love it. So yeah, she's, she's a, a hardcore gamer that it ever significantly got in the way of good times. There's a lot more that pal world could benefit from like a fleshed out story, more NPCs, or adding evolutions for the pals to avoid so many of them becoming irrelevant at higher levels. Yeah. But I'm surprised by how polished the whole package already feels at this early stage. Even in its early access state, Pal World is amusingly irreverent, has a surprising amount of content and deep survival mechanics, and is absurdly difficult to put down. It's impossible to overlook just how shamelessly it takes ideas and designs from Pokemon. And it's got some unsurprising bugs and performance issues. But when you're riding on the back of a flying dragon while shooting a blue duck with an assault rifle, <laughs> most of those blemishes wash away entirely. This is already one of my favorite survival games, and I'm incredibly excited to see how it evolves. For more, check out our reviews of Prince of Persia yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's it's very impressive that it's this good already. And that's where I'm at. I'm like, if they released this at full price and it wasn't early access, I think they would have a very compelling argument that it it's worth that. Like, it really is that fleshed out. And like we were saying, there's there's people that's, that are like 50, 60, 70 hours in and still finding and doing new stuff, which to me, I think is awesome. I think that's great. Oh, uh, what's, what's the drama with Asmin right now? Artist opinions don't matter. Expect me to draw a moral line. I have to perceive a difference that I consider substantial and I do not consider the difference substantial. I think this is about do you guys? world. No, right. No. And that's really what matters. If it was made with AI, I'm completely okay with that because it was fun. The evidence it is doesn't that matter. Nobody really cares the lead about this. developer has been very positive about AI in the past yeah. and made an AI game We're gonna play called this, by AI way. Art Imposter that lets yeah. an AI artist draw a picture. And so that that was like like one of the yeah, games. We're going to be playing and, this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI rather than what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and, and you know, I guess general uh, Twitter population, which is that, you know, AI is bad and it takes jobs from well, people. Well, AI and the sentiment from artists, artist opinions don't matter. It just doesn't matter because what matters is the opinion of the people that are buying the product. Like, it doesn't, like, your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. Like, it, 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 it's not, it's not relevant. It's like whenever one of these, like, you know, really well-respected and, and really respectable uh, directors talks about how bad Marvel is. Shut up, old man. <laughs> Shut, Shut up. Old man. <laughs> I um, like watching the Thor movie. It was cool. <laughs> And they, he followed up with, am I wrong about this? Looking at so many people angry with what I said is kind of shocking to me. When you go to market with a product, the only thing that matters is the consumer's perception of the product's value. When did this become wrong? So like, 
here's the thing. I, I understand what he's trying to say. He's like, at the end of the day, within the market, who cares? Because if, and I mean, we're seeing this right now, it seems like people don't, and this is what I, the point I've made. The broader public and the gaming public doesn't seem convinced of the arguments that Pal World has overstepped any boundaries. Like they, they just aren't convinced, which is why it's sold so many millions upon millions of copies. They just don't care. If if they were convinced that this was some ethical lapse or there was a real concern here, then they wouldn't buy the game. But they're buying the game because they're unconvinced of the arguments being made against it. And so the perception is that either the arguments suck or the perception is that the people that are getting upset about Pal World are just pearl clutching and like virtual signaling, whatever. And that also the game is fun enough and it's it's enjoyable enough that it's not worth like the, the trade off between their enjoyment of it versus the ethical concern outweighs it. And so they just are choosing to play it anyways. I think it's really easy to clip that section and just be like, see, Zach just said, quote, artists' opinions don't matter. What matters is the opinion of the people buying the product and be like, oh, wow, he sounds insane. In the context of what he's talking about, when trying to sell a product, it doesn't matter what the artists think. It matters how good the game is and if the customer likes it. That is factually true. That is the case. Like, it doesn't matter if if you have a, an ethical problem with it or if you think that it's not artistically valid. In the context of selling a game or selling a product, yeah, it doesn't matter. In the same way, like, I think the comparison to Marvel is a good one. Like, the argument that, that Marvel movies are like the lowest form of artistic filmmaking, I can understand that. It's like the same like formula 15 times a year of just the same basic story within the superhero movie just rehashed time and time again. And then they lead up to like the Avengers crossover movie where all of them come together. And then they have these TV shows that they're trying to sell you on as well that have other portions of the story. So if you really want to know what's going on, you have to watch the movies, you have to watch the TV shows and then the crossover movies and you have to keep track of everything. And it eventually just gets so overwhelming people check out like me because it's all the same thing. And so it's like, yeah, it is kind of like the lowest form of artistic creation within film. But in the context of trying to sell a movie to the public, does it matter if it's the lowest form? No, like nobody really cares. <laughs> like it, if people like it because it's fun and it's enjoyable to go see Doctor Strange do some weird trippy stuff, you know, on a Friday night with your friends to go see a movie. Like, no, no that like that's all the person that was buying the ticket really cared about. You know, it, it just that's all they really cared about. So. I, I understand what Zach is saying. I think to be upset about it, you'd have to intentionally take him out of context, which I would argue this person specifically is doing <laughs> by taking the quote out of, out of context. I truly don't give a shit if it's related to Power World. I've stopped caring about any discussion surrounding that game, but this involves a bigger point surrounding AI being used by studios while layoffs in the industry keep happening. And that's something you should care about. I mean, AI, so most, uh, there are layoffs in the industry related to AI. Absolutely. There are also layoffs in the industry happening right now because companies over, overstaffed after COVID um, when money was basically free. And this is, to be clear, like, these layoffs suck, right? Just laid a bunch of people off. But the thing you have to understand, like I have a degree in corporate finance. I, I've been trained in how you decide how to lay people off and when to do it. Like it's part of my education is pricing these things out and figuring out when the money doesn't line up and when it doesn't make sense anymore. And in the context of the gaming industry, what happened is in 2020, 2021, debt became so freaking cheap that a lot of these tech companies, not just in gaming, but also in like Meta, Windows, or Windows, Microsoft, PlayStation, all of these companies, they went and they hired a bunch more people because they could afford it because money was basically free. Money was so cheap that the rates you were being charged for your debt were lower than inflation, meaning that meaning that your like loan balance was technically dropping because inflation was rising higher than the rate at which you were being charged if it wasn't tied to an inflation index or something, which is insane. Like that's no part of it mathematically should work that way, but that's what happens when you have interest rates that are at like two or 3%. It's ridiculous. It's like straight up breaks all finance. It's ridiculous. So. With that being said, like what they did is they hired too many people, they expanded into too many offices, they brought too many people on, and now that rates have risen very quickly, they now can't like they, they can't figure out how to make it work mathematically and financially. So they're like, oh well, now we gotta lay people off. So that's what they're doing. Does that make it okay? Well, that I I think it makes it make sense. 
I think it lines up and justifies it. Does that excuse, like, should we be upset at the managers for overhiring? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, the, the managers should not have hired the, that many people to the point where now they have to lay them off and now they, they have no employment. That sucks. Like, that sucks for everybody. They shouldn't have hired that many people. That was a mistake. It was short-sighted, absolutely. In the context of of what it's doing, though, like, this, is this all of a sudden, like, a huge video game industry AI-specific crisis. No, people are being laid off across the tech sector because they all overexpanded. And now the, a lot of those companies are realizing they didn't need to expand that much and it wasn't financially viable in the long term. So now they're backing off of it and laying a lot of people off. Unfortunately, it's just what they do. Like this is just what happens. He took my thing.